Monday, the most miserable day of the year. Or at least that's what they say. I hadn't even heard of it until last year. He had a right face on him. I mean, he's not the most cheeriest of fellas, but that Monday, he was especially miserable. And when I asked him what he was up, he just grunted, nothing. I tried again later. Oh, for God's sake, will you give it a rest, Paula? It's probably just that Blue Monday thing. Blue Monday? Isn't that a New Order song? Well, weren't you watching the news earlier? He said. Truth be told, I wasn't. He and watched the news religiously, but I often found it a bit too downbeat. I mean, there's enough to be miserable about, isn't there? Anyway, Ian explained that Blue Monday was the name given to the third Monday in January. It's because Christmas is over and everyone's skin and the weather is shit and everybody's already breaking the New Year's resolutions, he said. I didn't get it. What made one random day in January any worse than the rest? I mean, why is it so bad and different being skin in January than it is in September? And as for New Year's resolutions, well, I didn't have much time for them. You can make a resolution any time of the year to change something, I told him. People put too much store on January the 1st. Well, this raised a smile at least. Well, actually, more of a belly laugh. Resolutions, he roared. <laughs> You're a fine one to talk about resolutions. When have you ever made a resolution? When have you ever changed anything about yourself? Try to make yourself a better person. I got a bit defensive. I do. All oh, right, really, he said. When have you ever joined a gym? When have you ever stopped eating crap and cut out drinking? I tried to laugh it off. <laughs> well, chance will be a fine thing with you living in this house, I said. But he wouldn't have any of it. Uh, don't blame me for you letting yourself go. Letting myself go? Is that really what he thought of me? He claimed he was joking, but, well, he got me thinking. Maybe he was right. I mean, ever since we got together eight years before, I'd piled the pounds on. I blamed it on my age. Well, like, when you're 40, you can't expect to match the stamina, the the spark of somewhere in the 20s and 30s, can you? But then I thought, maybe it's not my age. Like whenever I look online, I always see these glamorous women in the 40s, 50s, 60s. The kind of women who don't have to lie flat on their bed just to put the jeans on. The kind of women who can sip on martinis all night and still keep the makeup intact. Not the kind of women whose faces turn to overripe tomatoes once they've had a few drinks. So I decided, there and then, Paula Groves was having a makeover. Body and mind. The works. Don't get me wrong, I didn't expect to morph from tomato woman into martini woman overnight. I knew it was going to be hard work, but with the right attitude and positive thinking, I knew I could do it. Well... That's what the pile of self-help books told me that I read. <laughs> anyway, first of all, I joined a gym. Now, this terrified me because I hadn't stepped foot in a gym for a couple of years now when it was the ill-fated step aerobics class. Just a small break, nothing major, but it frightened the life out of me. Proper shut me up. Anyway, my fitness instructor, Holly, was lovely. Very young, very enthusiastic, but very nice. I cut out alcohol too. Started eating healthier. Ian was uh, very supportive. He dug out a picture of me, a very unflattering one, that was taken on our all-inclusive holiday. Stuck it on the fridge said I should look at it whenever I fancied a slice of cake or some wine. I look all right state on it. I was glad to get rid of the thing. I even took up meditation. I found it very relaxing. Well, duh, ain't that the point? <laughs> I 
I used to scoff at the idea of mindfulness, but as time went on, I found it really helpful. I tried to talk to Ian about it, but it just wasn't his bag. Oh, come on, Paula, I've had a really stressful time at work. All I want to do is get home, chill out, watch Top Gear and not have a discussion about trying to find me in a piece, he said. So, I joined some groups online, shared healthy eating tips, exercise routines, positive thinking, that kind of thing. And I actually started thinking I was living the life that I should be living. I started feeling healthier, going to bed earlier, getting up early. And Ian said he was proud of me, said he didn't think I'd keep it up and that I proved him wrong. And if you knew Ian, you knew what a big admission that was from him. I was so happy. I just felt so miserable. Didn't realise it for a while. Months went by. People had asked me how I were and I, was, I said I was happy and then one day, one random day, I woke up and I started to cry. I tried to write it off as a blip but I couldn't. I stopped eating healthier, started piling the pounds on, stopped going to the gym. Ian said he knew it wouldn't last. So I went back to self-help books to inspire me. I mean they'd helped me before. But now they just felt like they were full of empty slogans. Apart from one, that one, I read from cover to cover. I mean, don't get me wrong, that was full of slogans too. It wouldn't be a self-help book otherwise, would it? But there was something interesting in it that talked about happiness and fulfilment and how other people could contribute to it or not. Ian left four weeks ago. He's called a few times. I think he wants to come back, but he won't say. He's waiting for me to break first, you know, admit I made a mistake. And I have thought about it with Christmas and everything, but I don't think I want him back. Funny. I finally realized that today when I was on the way to yoga. Oh yeah, I've quit the gym weren't really my thing but I actually I'm going to yoga now because I want to not because I'm proving a point about resolutions or this big fantasy about martini woman wine was always more my tipple anyway Tonight, I'm going to drink this because I want to. I'm going to eat whatever I want. I'm going to watch whatever I want on TV. Now, I'm not saying my choices will be the good ones, the most sensible ones, but they'll be mine. Which must be a good thing, mustn't it? Happy Blue Monday.